as far as the market, yeah, I think it's incredible actually how resilient it is right here. And it's holding up in the face of the inflation numbers that we saw last week, some weak housing starts that came out surprisingly, the dollar falling, the yields rising. So I think at this point now, the market is anticipating that the go back to work scenario is still somewhat, I won't call it infancy, I'd say more like toddler to adolescent at this point. And so there's still some optimism there, but it's being tempered definitely because you can see it if you just look at the indices. Right now, the NASDAQ 100 and the Russell 2000 are not doing as well technically as the SPY and the Dow. And that's because they are both under their 50-day moving average, which is a cautious phase, as opposed to the S&Ps and the Dow, which are still above their 50 or in a bullish phase. And then if you look at the sectors, you still have the semiconductors and the big tech hanging on and trying to come back. But at the same time, they're still in caution phases, and some of them are just been out and out beaten up, especially some of the older moves from the pandemic, like Fastly and Palantir and Datadog. They're doing better. So you have these divergences. You still have a lot of uncertainty of what's going to happen in the Middle East right now. It seems like it's not been very well contained. Um, you have doubt on what's going to happen with the infrastructure package. You have uh, at this point also now things are coming back a little bit in the oil and gas market after the pipeline is reopened and that's alleviating some of the concerns about short supply. But I think the confusion in the market is there, but the optimism is sort of holding things up and these next couple of days are crucial. Because if we cannot maintain these recent lows, particularly in the Russells and the NASDAQ, we will fall and we will fall harder. On the flip side, we get through the 50 and the, and the day moving averages in both the Russells and the NASDAQ, then it's possible that we'll take out recent highs. But we've tested these recent highs in some of the sectors like retail, transportation, but we haven't taken them out yet. So that tells me kind of good time to sort of be a little patient here in equities. I think uh, one of my favorite right now is just based on, it could be a temporary one, but it might be a good little investment shorter term. And that is with the relaxing the masks. Uh, how many women stopped wearing makeup and lipstick over the last year and a half? So now that we can take our masks off, people are going to go out and start supplying themselves with facial products and lipstick. So I'm looking at companies like Estee Lauder and Ulta in particular. Um, I think also one of the things I'd like to talk about right now is, and this can always go counter the market, but in terms of pet care, people bought dogs and cats and were home with them. Now they're leaving. And I think they could start buying sort of to compensate for their poor animals who are going to be back at home. So Petco, which is Wolf, that reports this week. Chewy might be something to look at, which got really beat, beaten up after being a pandemic darling. And then cannabis, there's still a lot of talk about potential legislation to free up the banking on a federal level. There are things that to watch here. Um, but we're still relatively light equity wise. We've definitely got profits in all of our commodity positions and we're sitting tight for right now. So I've read headlines like Bitcoin, the most crowded trade ever. So there's a lot of liquidation from that. Of course, Elon Musk has been vocal about it. At the same time, you have MicroStrategy keeps buying more Bitcoin. They bought another 10 million today, actually. So I think this is probably a good, healthy correction. The negative to that, of course, is the volatility, which had really died down, has now come back into the Bitcoin space. Um, but I'd like to see what happens here around 40 to 42,000. If it can hold there, then I think we can drop further. But if it gets down closer to 32, 33, I would be a buyer. And if it holds 40 to 42 and can get back over, let's say 45, that might be another good place. But right here, it's just massive liquidation. Not surprising considering everybody that I talk to, people who know nothing about anything, were buying Bitcoin. As far as some of the other currencies, though, Ethereum also is correcting with that. But I think Ethereum would probably have a pretty good level to hold somewhere around 3350 to 3500. So I still look into Ethereum. Uh, I think that's really a better 
play potentially. And we're looking at some of the meme coins, like for example, even though we're not playing Dogecoin, we're interested in XRP as the potential SEC lawsuit being resolved and actually maybe the United States looking at Ripple as some kind of an all currency, which I think would do the United States a lot of good considering the dollar continues to free fall. So yeah, this is a good correction and probably once the dust settles, another buyout. But in terms of Dogecoin itself, I think probably the most interesting rumor out there is again, going back to Elon Musk, that he is potentially looking at Dogecoin and actually almost taking over Dogecoin so it becomes Elon coin or whatever. So um, so essentially, right, will he start adopting more Dogecoin, collecting Dogecoin? We all, he's already talked about it a lot. Um, and, and will that then really legitimize it uh, as far as purchase power for things like a Tesla potentially, which of course now he's saying you can't buy a Tesla with Bitcoin. So he might be just switching. He's looking for something that doesn't environmentally destroy things, at least in his mind. I think he's wrong about the environmental concerns, but that's neither here nor there. Dogecoin might be a good alternative for him, as would be Ripple, by the way, or XRP. I would never bet against Tesla or Elon Musk. I think that when you see these big downturns and you see these calls like by Michael Burry, who is famous, by the way, just to tell your viewers, because of the big short, he saw the mortgage debacle coming ahead of everyone else and was heavily short. He waited two years to be right. So here we are again. He shorted Tesla, we're thinking, somewhere around 536 through buying puts and it's trading above that and it traded all the way up to 900. So I, I, I would not, as an investor, I would certainly not follow him and his trading strategy because you can go broke if you don't have his type of deep pockets. Whether or not he's going to be right long term, I think if Tesla can get back over 600, it might have taken some kind of a temporary bottom here at around these levels at 560 to 575. I'm always looking for the dip to buy, not necessarily the rally to short when it comes to, to Tesla and Elon Musk.